uh, there's a guy on, I, I don't watch TV, so I'm not sure of the program, but it's Chip and Joanna Gaines. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have a metal guy, his name's Jimmy Don. Mm -hmm. If y'all are familiar with Jimmy yeah, Don. Jimmy Don. Yeah, so, so I made Jimmy Don a pair of boots and put his logo on the boot tops uh, not too long ago. So mm -hmm. this turned out real neat. I can't remember birthdays or anniversaries, but I can dang sure remember individual boots. So there's a lot of interest in boot making. There's a lot of interest in the craft. People nowadays, especially young people, they want everything so quick. People want to go to a school and they want to learn boot making in 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, they want a certificate that says they're a boot maker. And then whether they do anything with it afterward, you know, who knows. A lot of boot making is muscle memory. So to making, uh, a two week making school, I think confuses a lot of people. They don't retain the information I think you have to do something over and over and over again. Uh, the man who taught me boot making on <coughs> sewing in weld, I sewed weld for that man for about five years. I've probably sewn weld in a thousand pair of boots, so I did that for years and years, but I think it made me a better maker. A lot of these young people don't want to make a commitment to get into an apprenticeship that'll last several years and they learn it properly. Like I said, they want it in two weeks. They want to be done in two weeks and they, they want results quick. And that's the kind of society we live in. Everyone mm -hmm. wants it right now. And as you all know, anything good, you've got to work for it. Mm -hmm. it. It doesn't come easy and it takes time to get. What's that adage? You got quick, fast, and cheap. Pick yeah, two. Yeah, exactly. Pick two, because you can't get all three. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You take a pile of leather and you throw it up on the table, and seven days later, you've got a, a finished boot that someone's going to wear for the next 20 years of their life, you know. There's something really magical about that. It's really almost kind of a religious experience, but I, I get an emotional attachment to every single pair of boots I make. It takes takes me roughly 50, about 50 hours, once I start about 50 hours to make a pair of boots, depending on the boots, but in that 50 hours, that's that's my life, is that mm -hmm. pair of boots, you know. Your blood and your sweat yeah, and absolutely. your heart. So when they come pick them up, part of me doesn't want to let go of that pair of boots. It's like I wish I had a, a wall, I could just display them all, you know, and look at them. And, it's your, it's your baby. It's like yeah. you gave away one of your children. Yeah, absolutely. In, in, a, in a weird way. Is that what it feels like? Yeah, absolutely. Like you're just it, passing off your kids to someone else and hope that they'll take care of your kids? Oh, like. Yeah. I do know that every pair that I make, I try to learn a lesson from that pair and carry it on to the next pair. It, it, might, it might not even be a mistake, but just a small lesson that I think I can do this a little bit better on the next pair. But yeah, you learn a lot. You learn, you, you learn a lot about yourself with boot making also. It's a very, very lonely it, profession also. You sit in here by yourself all day. No, it seems very personal. Yeah, I, I tell people that if you leave my shop and, and you're not a friend when you leave, then I'm not really doing my job, you know? So um, it's a very personal deal. You know, imagine being in the Fort Worth stockyards and you run into someone that you made a, a pair of boots for five years prior and they're wearing your boots you know it's like wow i made a pair of boots a couple of years ago for a working cowboy young kid he was breaking colts so he said i'll go through a pair of uh, store-bought boots in you know about 60 days and i said no way okay. this kid said yeah i can and i said okay whatever so i measured and we designed the boots and we designed a very durable pair of work boots this guy came picked up his boots and i think it was at about the 60 not the 60 day mark i had to do a complete bottom rebuild he brought the boots in i remember i was so mad about the way those boots looked and i said you've got to be joking but then i got to thinking about it and i'm like man he he wore those boots every day for 60 days and those boots became a part of him once i realized okay this kid really was depending on these boots you know he he, he wore them then I wasn't so mad. I did a bottom rebuild. I think after I did the bottom rebuild, I think he, they lasted probably about another maybe 90, 120 days and they were done and he ordered another pair. I'm like, wow. What's your average time 
from the time if I came in today and we started uh, we started our conversation yeah, today. I'm, I'm quoting probably April, uh, probably late April right now of 2020. So wow, yeah, which is is pretty quick. Anything up to a year is pretty quick. I'd say a year or sooner. You know, there's some makers who've been doing it a lot longer than I have, uh, who have a very established customer base that are. 24 to 48 months out so I'm able to keep it at about a year most people are good with a year you know when when you go out beyond that year you know some people are like no oh, is there any way you can do it quicker you know it's like no there's not you know Pro the problem you have with with multi-employee shops is if you have someone measure someone's foot and they take the measurements and they pass it on to the next guy the next guy builds the last there, there's something lost there. So I, I think whoever measures your feet should be the guy to build the last and should be the guy to pattern. As I said earlier, as I'm measuring you, I'm, I'm forming an opinion of how, of how I'm gonna make the boots. So it's not a one size fits all pattern. Everyone's foot will have a different, even top pattern, top pattern, how I want the boots to pull on. You know, there's a lot of factors, your age, you know, uh, you know the structure of your foot if your foot's as hard as a rock or if it's you know soft as you know you know there, there's a lot of things that are going to determine how I, how I make your patterns and ultimately how your boots will turn out so uh, I think at least minimum in a shop whoever measures should do the last building you know people have warned me about boot making that you know you'll, you'll get to a point where it does become a job or whatever but it's fine I'm not worried about it so you know the without cutting corners you know there's so so much work i need to do each month to be able to make it work you, you've got to replenish leather you have to replenish you know um, threads and supplies and uh, it, uh hopefully it never happens but you know if a machine breaks down you have to schedule with them whenever they're in the area i'm very happy with the material that i'm able to buy and put into these boots and uh I've never had a boot fail just out of uh, because the material was wasn't good quality or because the boots weren't made good enough. So I don't do any advertising. It's all word of mouth, and uh, I think uh, not only boot making, anything, auto mechanic, air conditioner mechanic, whoever. I think once you establish a reputation, you don't have to do advertising. People talk. Wait, 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 stop. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing, subscribe to my Facebook, follow me on Instagram, throw me a pin on Pinterest, if you can, um, and follow me.